Hi everyone, welcome to Reflecting on My Journey. This is the beginning of a series of, of different shows about young people talking about their high school, college, and career pathways. This is interview number one on May 19th, 2014. And my name is Rob Darrow. I live in Santa Cruz, California. And I'm Carol Smoot, and I live in Fresno, California. The purpose of these shows is really to showcase young people talking about their high school, college, and career pathways overall. And we're excited tonight, today, whatever time you may be watching this, to have Courtney Criswell with us. <laughs> Courtney um, attended Buchanan High School in Clovis, California, and then went on to the University of Southern California, where she earned her Bachelor of Science degree in Public Policy and Management. She then went on to Syracuse University in Syracuse, New York, where she earned her MA degree in public administration. She now works for KIPP Public Charter Schools as the Director of Government Affairs and Policy in Washington, D.C. So welcome, Courtney. We're really glad that you could join us this evening. Um, would you start by sharing your name and your current position, including where you work and a brief description of what you do now? Sure, absolutely. My name is Courtney Criswell. I work for KIPP Public Charter Schools. We're a network of about 150 schools and growing. Uh, we're based in 20 states and as well as here in Washington, D.C., where I live. Okay. Um, can you briefly explain a little bit about a little bit more about what you actually do? Sure, absolutely. So I run our government affairs and policy shop. And I'm in charge of raising our public funding at the federal level, as well as working with members of Congress to remove policy impairments that keep us from serving our students with quality and continuing to grow to reach more students. OK. Um, we saw the list of colleges you attended, but could you review those for us and talk a little bit about your majors and explain how they fit into what you do now? Absolutely. I, I attended the University of Southern California for my undergraduate work and got a degree in public policy and management. And then I attended Syracuse University at the Maxwell School for Citizenship and Public Affairs where I received a master's in public administration, um, both of which gave me a, a solid foundation in um, all sorts of disciplines related to public policy, political science, economics, statistics, um, government affairs, as well as the social policies, education studies, and, and that sort of thing, um, which gave me a really strong foundation to start my career. Great. Um, when you applied to colleges, how many did you apply to? Just four, which I realized after the fact was very few in comparison to my peers. So I felt really fortunate when I got in that, that I had a, a good place to go to school. Okay, so how did you decide uh, that those were the four that you were going to apply to? Um, for me, it was a number of things that, that helped evolve into my final decision. Um, the first being I wanted to be close enough to my family that I could drive home if I wanted to on a weekend to see them. Um, the second was I wanted to be sure that the universities were really strong and a couple of different majors that I was interested in. I thought I might want to pursue a career in film at one point and was always interested in government affairs and policy as well, so that certainly narrowed down my choice to find schools that were good in both of those things as well. And then the last piece was more of a, a gut feeling. Some campuses that I toured, I really could see myself there, and, and others I just simply couldn't no matter how, how terrific the school was on paper, it just didn't seem like the right fit for me. So how did you know that? Did you go visit colleges? And if so, how many did you go see? I, I sure did. I, I imagine I visited 15 or 16. Um, I actually conned my, my parents into start taking, starting to take me on college visits when I was in about seventh grade. Um, and, and every trip that we took, we'd stop in and see a few more. So I, I had a pretty good feeling about where I wanted to be by the time it, it came to apply. Okay. Um, what about that application process seemed particularly daunting to you? Yeah, for me, the, the most daunting was, was getting ready for the SAT. I've never been a great standardized test taker, and so 
it was daunting to me to take a multi-hour standardized test. Um, the other piece that was difficult for me was um, I, I was raised to really value being humble and and spending so much air time um, writing about myself uh, was also difficult for me at first to find a authentic voice when I wrote my, my personal statement um, that, that talked about my good qualities and why I would be a good match for the school without, without being uh, over glorifying of, of the things that I had done to date. Okay. Um, I want you to think back to high school if you can and, and I want you to think through what in high school did you do that helped you be successful while you were in high school? So I think the bottom line for me was that I really challenged myself both in the classes that I took as well as in the extracurriculars um, that I did to, to develop a larger skill set. It definitely wasn't enough just to have good grades to go to the schools I wanted to go to. It was, it was really important that I, I honed my confidence uh, through extracurricular work and being on teams. Um, there was a, a program I did called History Day where I learned some great study skills um, as well as, as a great deal of confidence, um, all of which shaped who I was to prepare me for college and are many of the things that I reflect on, on still as, as the key things that prepare me for, for my, my day job now and my career. Okay, so in a way you've answered the next part of the question, but how did, how did the things that you did in yeah. high school really help you in college? Yeah, I mean, I mean the biggest was being prepared with strong study habits um, was, was really key for me. Um, in, in high school and, and some of the younger grades, often uh, you excel by, by just doing all of the work. In, in college, it was a much deeper level of understanding that you needed to be successful, as well as really strong um, time management skills. And I think by being so busy in junior high and high school with a variety of activities, it really helped me in, in that regard. Okay, and then what you did in high school and what you did in college, how do you see that applying to what you do now? Yeah, so I mean, uh, while I learned a great deal in my academics through college, I think some of the pieces that helped the most in college prepare me for where I am now um, were really the, the internships that I got involved in early on. At each, at each stage of my studies and now in my career, I'm always looking ahead to what's the next rung that I hope to climb to. Um, so even as a freshman, I, I started right off the bat in internships to get different work experience and that really helped define where, where I wanted to go in my career path and, and had me ready as soon as I was done um, with my schooling to enter straight out of the gate into a job that I wanted to be in. Okay. Um, you've talked a little bit about w how high school helped you with college and college has, had, has helped you um, with your life now. Um, how, how do you see, um, if, you went, if you could go back and do things over again, okay, w let's go back to high school. What would you change about what you did in high school if you would change something and, and why? Interesting question. Um, in, in high school, I think maybe the, the one thing I would have, I would change if I could go back and, and quite frankly, this applied to un, undergraduate school and graduate school for me was just simply to not put quite so much pressure on myself. Um, I think sometimes I was so petrified about doing well um, before entering different settings that had I just taken a deep breath and stayed calm, I would have done even better in my studies. I've really learned that in my career, um, that I just need to pause whenever I'm nervous and take a deep breath and know that I've done all the work to be successful in whatever I'm taking on next, and, and I wish I would have known to be a little more lighthearted then and not quite so serious. Okay. Um, if you had the process to, to do over again about where to go to college, how to go through the application process, 
any of that kind of thing. Is there anything that you would do differently with those things? Very interesting. Um, you know, I, I think I wouldn't be who I am today had I had I not chosen my undergraduate school. I picked an environment that was very different from what I had known um, growing up in a suburban setting and going to a very urban school, and it it really shaped my career path. Um, so I, I wouldn't change a thing about that. I went straight through from undergraduate school to graduate school. Um, which was a rare thing for my field. If I had to do it again, maybe I would have paused like so many of the admissions officers said I should have done for a couple of years to get some work experience in between. Um, I, I can't go back and do that, but um, it, it was hard in grad school being one of three that came straight from undergrad, there was definitely more pressure put on us to succeed and have great jobs. Uh, when we got, got out, we were definitely told by the dean of the school that he had taken a chance on us and, and we sure needed to perform to prove our worth. Um, and that, that talk didn't happen for any of the other students and I think it, it set a bit of a funny tone um, for again putting more pressure on myself. but. Um, it worked out. I ended up with a, a great job when I was done and, and haven't looked back. So it all turned out fine. But I, I might have paused a little bit and not been in quite such a rush to keep going through school. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions about the colleges you went to um, and a couple of things you just said. The first thing is, can you tell us a little bit about USC and why a student might want to consider going to USC? Sure. So I, I think the biggest draw to to USC, uh, beyond the sunshine, which is wonderful in Los Angeles, is, is the Trojan family. Um, so a, a lot of schools say that they have tremendous networks to help you on your path, but uh, USC really lives that value. Um, I, I still call on mentors that I made of other students and of professors at, at USC um, when I'm thinking about next steps in my career. and. Um, was redrawn in to be part of the board for the policy school and, and continuing be, to be engaged even though I'm a, a coast away and I really value that. Um, USD also dubs itself as a, a living laboratory and, and really uses the surrounding community to teach its students um, about life and about other cultures and other socioeconomic levels and and quite frankly, it was volunteering in schools near USC um, in, in areas that are really blighted and um, filled with, with students that, that didn't look like me or come from a neighborhood that I came from that, that really shaped me as a person. So I, I kind of became me and honed my voice by being in a very different environment there. Okay, and then you did your grad work at Syracuse. Talk to us about Syracuse. <laughs> Syracuse was was very different from USD. Um, I went from sunshine in Los Angeles and, and blue skies to, to snow for nine months out of the year. Um, it, was, it was a little depressing uh, to be in such bad weather, but it sure was conducive to, to learning. Um, I often refer to my time at Syracuse as boot camp for my brain. Um, it was very, very deep and intellectual, um, and I learned a ton. I've never worked so hard in my life. It was a year-long master's program where normally in my field it takes two, maybe three years to complete the program, so it was very compressed. Um, but I just learned a ton and, and had some really terrific professors, okay. uh, one of which runs a think tank that I do work with now. Oh, perfect. Did you, did you ever change course during college, like once you, like at one point you said you were interested in film and public policy. How yeah. did you narrow that down? And then did you ever, ever think, oh, I'm going to veer off of this? And if so, why? Or why did you decide to go the path you went? Yeah. So, so I actually veered twice. Once in undergrad, and then once again in graduate school. So, in undergrad, um, film school, uh, I, I hadn't gotten in straight away from um, being selected as an undergrad, but knew that there was a path by taking a minor 
uh, to be accepted into the program, and, and so I went that route, um, but got there, but just really didn't seem to fit with the other students. I didn't spend all my free time, you know, watching a new movie. Um, I, I just had different interests. Um, so I, I thought to myself, you know, maybe if I continue pursuing my path in, in government affairs and policy, maybe eventually I'll come back to, to make some documentaries about the people that I've met and, and actually got to help work on one uh, later in my career, which was really fun. Um, but, but I really just... I felt so much more confident and comfortable in the other major that I stuck with it as far as public policy. And then in graduate school, I thought I wanted to become a city manager. I would spent a lot of time interning for a city manager in Beverly Hills. Um, but then I got to graduate school and realized that 90% of my classes would, would have to be focused on statistics after I got done with the, the prerequisites um, for the major. And that just didn't seem like where it was my place. I, I really wanted to be digging in and figuring out how to solve bigger, juicier societal problems rather than so focused on math and and immediately uh, the classes in social policy resonated with me much more. So first week of school I decided to shift my emphasis for graduate school and I'm really glad I did. That cr that So, Courtney, one of our final questions is what advice you would have for students in high school today as they're thinking ahead for their careers, um, college, you know, where to go, and what path to take and all that sort of thing. So what, what kind of advice or words of wisdom might you have for them? Yeah, so I, I have the pleasure of getting to mentor a, a number of students in my current job, and, and one of them actually said a very poignant thing to me recently. She said, it's not enough just to get into college and get good grades. You always need to be thinking about the next step and what brings you joy. And, and when you know that, that's the career path that you need to follow when work doesn't feel like work. And, and I think that's how I've always felt, but never have said it quite so eloqu eloquently. And I think that's what's most critical is just really figuring out authentically what what you what you want to wake up to do every day and, and what gets you excited and, and pursue that path. And, and so as you think about, you talked a little bit about the things that are exciting for people's paths. Um, what, so what can what can students do in high school to really know what their path is? I, I think the biggest is, is to really expose yourself to as many electives and many extracurriculars as you can, which is tough um, for, for any student that wants to get into a, a super highly selective school. It, it probably means that you have to take summer school um, to get some of your courses out of the way to make room for, for other things um, during your classroom experience. I took summer school every summer while I was in high school, not because I needed the credits, but because I needed the room to get to experience a variety of different things. And it was a lot of work and, and not many breaks, but I'm sure glad I did because it, it really freed me up to get to experience a, a broader curriculum and, and more activities that helped to shape my own path. So I know you talked earlier about being involved in History Day, but I'm kind of curious now about those other electives you took that you think yeah. that, too, that were good or, or the other types of activities you got involved in because there was an interest there. What, what were some of those other things that got you going in that direction? Sure, sure. Some, some were based at my school itself. So uh, we mentioned History Day. I, I made films while I was in college. Um, and and was successful in competitions, so that exposed me to, to new communities. Um, because of excelling at History Day, for example, um, I had the chance to visit our nation's capital several times where I now live, um, so it, it, gave me it gave me comfort in, in new environments. Um, I was a swimmer 
for part of my high school career. Um, I raced sailboats outside of school um, up and down Southern California, and that was a hobby that I pursued in college as well. Um, and I was so glad USC had a team. It was a great way to make friends through through my hobby, many of which are, are still good friends today. Um, other things that I pursued, um, one of the electives that I took was a, a class called peer counseling where I, I really learned to interact with a whole host of, of different students that were facing um, different problems that were, were foreign to me or, or having conflicts with folks at school that I helped to solve. Um, so a variety of different things. I, I took a photography class um, in school. Um, it really helped make me more well-rounded um, by by just getting involved in a variety of different things and testing them out. Some of which I, I did every year while I was in high school and, and still um, look back and engage in, in similar hobbies and others. I tried it once and thought, oh, a semester was enough. I don't need to do that again. Okay. In, in closing, Courtney, um, what have we not asked you that um, you can tell by the questions we're asking, the kind of things we're looking for. Yeah. You've got an audience out here of, of students who are looking down the road and, and wondering what their journey is going to look like. Wh what are the final things that we haven't suggested you talk about that you, you want to share? Yeah, so I, I think the last would just be um, be brave enough to apply for schools where you think it's a perfect fit for you, but just based on the high-level numbers, you might not be the fit for the cutoff. So, for example, based on just my SAT scores, I might not have been a fit for some of the schools that I applied to. And, and as I mentioned, I only applied to four, but I got into all of them, and I think it's largely because I was a well-rounded student. They weren't looking at just one piece. Um, so I would just encourage all students to apply to at least one stretch school that they would love to go to but aren't sure that they'll get into because that might be just your perfect fit. That's just perfect, Courtney. Thank you so much for being with us this evening. Thank and you. As, and as we close um, our, our discussion time with Courtney, um, I want to just kind of recap what she's talked about. Um, she's gone back through her journey uh, reflecting on the fact that um, it was a well-rounded background, one where she was not afraid to challenge herself um, and stretch, um, one where she really looked and visited colleges where she where she was seeking a place that she would fit, both from a comfort-wise, but from some of her criteria, uh, everything from being close to home. Um, far enough away to be away, but close enough to get home to visit, but also which matched her interests and had the majors that she thought she was particularly interested in. Yeah, I, I think what stuck, stood out to me was that Courtney started, you know, thinking about this stuff in seventh grade, and she talked about how she started visiting colleges early on, kind of figuring out if any of those things were right for her or not. She also talked about the different internships that she did in high school and college or maybe that was more in college, but regardless, internships are a great way to kind of get a, a taste of different areas, to volunteer your time and, and test out those different areas that you think you have. And then finally, I think Courtney did a great job of talking about the fit, the being the right fit. And there are different things that happen in our lives that tell us if that fit is right or it's not right. And it's important to listen to those things as we're moving through our respective careers wherever we are in that lineup. So. Again, we're excited, Courtney, that you were able to share a little bit with us today. Um, as a way to kind of close out all of this, if you'd like more information about our Reflecting on My Journey interviews, um, you can see my address there, my email, robdarrow74 at gmail.com or carols at carolsmoot at gmail.com. All of these um, interviews will be stored in YouTube. Um, if you look for My Journey YouTube, you will find the link there and then finally if there are those of you watching this that would like to be part of this interview in the future you can simply go to the website bit.ly slash journey interview and fill that out and then we'll get in contact with you and get to interview you at some point in the future so with that we want to thank everybody for being here until next time keep focusing on your academic and career goals with a forward direction
Bye.